Hey guys, I'm Mark and today I'm back with five useful tips for Affinity software. Most of them can be used across Affinity family, so you can use them in Affinity Designer, Affinity Photo and Affinity Publisher. But this time all credits goes to you guys, to my viewers. So I simply go to comment section across several of my video and took your advices, your tips, your walkarounds. So thank you for that. Thank you for building this nice learning community. Very, very useful comments. So I try to pick five most interesting and highlight in this video. So I'm just stealing your content today, guys. Once again, thank you for those tips. So the first tip from my viewers, this is super simple and embarrassing one that I forget to mention that. So just holding shift, most of us know about this already, but we got some beginners with us as well. So it's time to finally mention this, this tip. So while you're holding shift on your keyboard, you will be locking rotation in like 15 degrees so I'm holding shift when I rotate the object it's 15, 30, 45, 60, etc. So without shift, you got free hand. While you got shift, you are locking rotation. And that's not only for shapes. It's also very useful with pen tool. So while you're using pen tool, let's add some color. So while I'm using pen tool, and I'm bending those control points. I can hit shift right now and I will be also locking to certain degrees. So that's very handy. And I think it's even more useful with pen tool. All right, so we can use that to build our lines, our shapes. Just hold shift and your rotation with shapes and with pen tool will stick to like 15, 30, 45, all around. All right, so thank you for reminding us about simply holding shift. Very, very good advice for beginners. Alignment, but in context of notes, actually I must say I never use alignment for notes. What I always do with alignment panel is for example, I got three shapes, three icons, whatever it is, and then I select all, then I add to alignment panel at the top over here. And then I can, of course, align them to one line. I can also use spacing, very, very handy. So I can space them. So I got exactly the same gap between them. And that's how I use alignment panel. But someone mentioned that you can actually use alignment directly on nodes, not on whole shapes. So let's try to do that. Let's, I'll grab pen tool. Let's do some notes. The person mentioned that it's, it's better on like the, the sharp notes, but I will give it a go on the curvy one anyway. So we got notes. So we need to use note tool to select notes. So I selecting three notes here. And now I'm going to use alignment. And voila, they're aligning one line. And I can even use spacing to put this node in the center, to be exactly in the center. I never use alignment while building shape with pen tool. So I must say that's new for me. And I hope you guys will find this tip very, very useful. It's totally new thing for me. And I already can see how it may improve my workflow and shape building skills. So thank you very much for this tip about using alignment tool with nodes, actually with nodes, not only full shapes. And tip number three, it's using wrap in affinity photo. And w after I read this comment below the video about walkarounds and stuff like that, oh, I know which one, missing feature. Someone shared that in missing feature video. I was laughing out loud because it's such a ridiculous idea, but from other hand is the best <laughs> well, but the best thing that we can do right now. So the idea behind this is uh, move your, let's say you want to make a wrap your logo, text, shapes, whatever it is. So move that stuff to 
Affinity Photo and use the raster editor. So you need to convert your shapes, your vectors to raster. And then you can use Mesh Wrap, transform that, save that as PNG, move it back to Affinity Designer and then trace it with Pen tool to make it vector once more. So this is like all around, we must turn our vectors to raster, wrap them in Affinity Photo, put them back in Designer and trace them with Pen tool. So it's a really long walk around, but currently that's the only way how you can use a proper wrap tool, mesh tool with designer, I would say. So thank you for this walk around. You described this very nicely in the comment section. Thank you for like taking time to share your tricks with us. All right, next one is called cookie cutter and that also took me by surprise. And this is in relation to a lack of a shape builder tool. So there are several techniques you can build shapes. And one of those techniques involve uh, using divine. So we can, if you put like three shapes like this together, then we select them all and we click divine over here in geometry panel. We will end up divining them into separate shapes. But that removed the first shape we got. So we don't have the original one. And also, it's very often lead to artifacts. Take a look in my layer panel right now. It's very messy. We got multiple artifacts. So I will just show you the simplified version of what someone called cookie cutter. This is not the original one described in the comment section below. It was quite a long one so i was able to develop let's say simplify version more user friendly so in general the of the, the main purpose is to use additional rectangle reduce opacity of that and put it over behind the shapes you plan to divide and take a look if i divide them right now with this additional shape behind I can move this shape away now and take a look. When I pull out shapes, I still got the original one behind. So that's something that may be very handy for you if you want to unite them together later on. In addition, it's a little bit easier to manage those artifacts. You can delete them from the layer panel all together so I can select multiple layers like this I can hit delete they're gone and then I can use this additional shape that we end up having here to unite some certain shapes add them together and we got let's say a new shape so this is walk around for shape builder instead of simply dividing the shapes you can put semi-transparent box behind so you will get this semi-transparent blueprint of the original shape that you can use in the shape building process the original method for cookie cutter was a little bit more complex involving several different operations here in geometry panel and it's it's really interesting i may go back to it in another video as well giving it some different use but this is the simplified version to use additional shapes to help yourself a little bit about the artifacts that happen when you divide the shape and then try to unite some pieces together into new shape so thank you for this advice this was totally new approach for me and i still exploring the possibilities with using additional semi-transparent shapes with my geometric operation so big thanks for that and the last one the last one this was the comment under one of those uh, videos with some uh, keyboard shortcuts so i didn't mention that you can paste inside the object so that's something you can do and it's even more useful in affinity photo than here in designer in designer we can simply drag and drop shape inside the shape but in photo is either more useful so take a look i'm going to copy this shape so this is classic common or Control c copy i will click on the shape and i will paste this inside the shape so i will 
hit command option and V and it seems like my shape just is on the same spot but take a look this is paste this is clip inside already so this is only appearing in the area with that certain shape of course we can clip inside using layer panel so I can put it out put it in like this but you can also use the shortcut while pasting directly so that's also something that may speed up your workflow if you use this feature a lot all right so we can paste inside we can use cookie cutter to enhance our geometry workflow especially when you divide shapes you can wrap in affinity photo and then put it back into designer to vectorize again you can align your nodes not only shapes and you can hold shift to lock on rotation all right guys as i mentioned all credits goes to you today thank you for very very useful advice and workarounds and i hope maybe we can turn this video into some mini series so feel free to drop even more useful advice in the comment section below this video i will be very grateful and i hope there'll be many people <laughs> that waiting for those advice especially from some veterans here i got people that use <laughs> serif software before they even release affinity that's really impressive so thank you for all advice so far i will always keep my eyes peeled and make notes on some very useful comments and i hope one day i will have enough to make a second part for this video thank you for today like always i will try to post two tutorials like this every week so if you want to stay tuned consider subscribing to my youtube channel and i will see you in the next tutorial bye